We're not trying to get at the being of human beings in a historical domain. We're not trying to get at our being from the perspective of ourselves as individuals, from ourselves as a collective, from ourselves as society, but rather we want to get at these questions about being in the domain of being. So this is an inquiry into being in the domain of being. Transformation is a discipline for dealing with being in the domain of being such that it's not designed to produce answers. Now, I know that must sound very strange to you because why ask a question if you're not going to get the answer? It's not designed to produce answers. It's not designed to produce solutions. It's not designed to give people a prescription for living. It's not designed to produce a recipe for getting the things out of life that you want. As it says here, the work is not about solutions or answers. It's an inquiry into the nature of being. In the process of this inquiry, insights show up that profoundly impact the quality of our lives. So that's the nature of transformation, this particular way of getting at these questions does not produce answers, does not produce solutions, does not produce recipes, does not produce prescriptions. What happens is that certain insights occur, even though you don't get answers, certain insights occur in the process of this inquiry using the invention, transformation, to get at these questions, certain insights will show up for you. Now, the insights don't show up necessarily as, a, oh, I see something I didn't see before, because that would be kind of like an answer. The insights show up rather than like that as actual openings or a space for being or a freedom or an empowerment in your everyday being in the world. So I want to make that very clear. I'm going to repeat it. We're going to be inquiring into these issues that are at the heart of the matter for human beings. The discipline with which we're going to conduct the inquiry, engage in these issues, is a discipline that we call transformation. Transformation is a way of getting at these issues that is not designed to produce answers or solutions or prescriptions or recipes, but rather is a way of getting at these issues such that insights will show up for you in the process of the inquiry and these insights will be openings or breaking opens or a certain sense of freedom or maybe more specifically a being empowered, not here in the hall in thinking about it, but being empowered in your everyday being in the world, in your everyday concerns. And by empowered, I mean having a sense of freedom, a kind of new opening that was not there before a sense of empowerment in facing the risk that being alive actually is. The challenge of our work, the challenge of our, of our concerns for society, the challenge of our personal and individual concerns, and the challenge of our concerns like a culture, like a civilization, like a society. So that's the nature of the work tonight. What we're promising is that we're not promising answer. We're not promising a pleasant evening. What we're promising is an inquiry that will show up in your life, in your everyday being in the world, like a breaking open, like a freedom to be, like a possibility for being in your everyday concerns with your everyday concerns. By the way, I want to be clear that I am clear. I know that everybody in the room is successful. So if you thought I was speaking to you because I thought there was something wrong with you or you weren't successful or you didn't know how to get along or you weren't great or you weren't doing well in life, that's not true. I'm clear that you're very, very successful. I'm also clear that when a person becomes successful, certain opportunities open up in their lives and they begin to recognize that whatever got them to wherever they are when they recognize their own success they recognize that somehow there are concerns and possibilities in life that what brought them to where they are don't match. There's this wonderful quote by Einstein, which I'll paraphrase, in which he says that the thinking that's gotten us to where we are will be insufficient 
to solve the problems that go along with having gotten to where we are. So that while that thinking that you and I are, that you and I engage in, may have gotten us to where we are, we need to recognize to some degree that that very thinking, the one about which we're so proud because it's gotten us to where we are, that very thinking also produces problems which that thinking isn't powerful enough to solve. At any rate, we all are pretty proud of what we know. And we deserve to be proud of what we know. We've accomplished a lot. We've accomplished a lot as individuals. We've accomplished a lot as a society. We've accomplished a lot as a nation. We've accomplished a lot as a race, human being. So we have this whole section of the world called what I know. Now, one of the things that's happened to me as I grew up and learned more, at some point things shifted and the more I learned, that is to say the more I knew, the more I knew I didn't know. So you probably have a little section of your life while you've got this important part called what you know, which you use to accomplish and, and work on the things that you're working on and accomplishing in life. So you've got this section called I know. You probably also have a section called I don't know. And there's a way of working on what you don't know. And we all know how to do it. You ask questions with the intention of getting accurate answers. And when you're working on what you don't know, if you ask questions in an intelligent way and work on those questions in an intelligent way, you get answers and you expand what you know, and maybe as you expand what you know, what you don't know expands a little bit more as well. You begin to see that there are other things you don't know. Now, tonight is not about what you know, nor, might I add, is it about what I know. This is not about my opinions about the being of human beings. I promise not to give you my opinions. I will keep them to myself. I invite you to keep your opinions to yourself. That is to say, tonight isn't about what you already know, what you've been taught, what you've learned, what you've read, what everybody knows, nor is it even about what you don't know. It's about what you don't know that you don't know. Now, very few people know anything about what they don't know that they don't know. So I've spent a good part of the last 14 years of my life struggling with the issue of what I don't know that I don't know. Now, I don't know much about it either, even though I've been struggling with it for a long time, but I know something about it. One of the things that I know about it is the kind of questions, the kind of relationship that you and I have with what we know and what we don't know has no power in the domain of what we don't know that we don't know. So what you and I are good at, which is knowing and finding out when we don't know, what you and I are good at, which is both knowing and finding out when we don't know, none of that skill, ability, none of that experience is of much value when you begin to deal with what you don't know that you don't know. Particularly, for example, asking questions to get the answer doesn't work in the realm of don't know that I don't know. You see, we could say that we were blind to this, that this is our blind spot. And I give you the example and ask you to consider the example that asking questions to get the answer, which we're all very good at, dealing with questions for which we want the answer, which we're all very good at, isn't very powerful in dealing with what you don't know that you don't know. There is, however, 